Welcome to Edutainment, the new monthly podcast from IE University. Over the coming months, we'll be bringing you interviews, events and discussions covering all aspects of university life. My name is Philip Quarterman, and although you won't see me again in this series, I'll be narrating you throughout your journey. In this month's edition of Edutainment, Professor Pedro Cifuentes on digital literacy in light of the digital revolution. Visual artist Daniel Canogar on his experimental workshop for students of architecture. And a chat with Iso Kant, i.e. student and entrepreneur. The digital revolution. Every year, new devices appear that open up new and unexpected channels of communication. Conversely, leading companies and technologies quickly fall by the wayside in this dramatically changing landscape. The digital uh, revolution has changed the way in which 2,000 million people relate and study and learn and work in the world. Pedro Cifuentes, Professor of Digital Journalism and Literacy, spoke with us about the implications of the digital revolution for students of communication. For instance, now in university, they are privileged in the sense that they are the first generation of digital natives which will access the new media landscape. But on the other hand, they must be more flexible than ever because they must adapt to a landscape which is suffering from uh, two crises, the economic crisis and, the, and their own industry crisis because um, nobody has found a business model which makes uh, news production or media uh, profitable. Digital literacy is about knowing the advantages and disadvantages of the digital revolution while it's happening. Against this background of digital revolution, in an effort to equip students with the most appropriate tools, IE University recently collaborated with digital publishing company Loarna to provide ebooks to its students of digital literacy. So far, they have been very, very useful because we get readings each week of hundreds of pages and we're to we totally rely on our laptop. So just for example, last Monday, we had a field trip to Madrid and we had readings lots of readings. So we basically put the readings on this ebook, took them to the bus and were able to read on the bus. And they're so handy, you can put them everywhere, so perfect. Young people, generation from 20 till 50, this uh, kind of uh, edition will be very attractive, not only in pleasure literacy edition, but technological for learning. We're here today in university. I think that's really will be the branch that the digital edition has to, to, to be on. In terms of taking notes, I usually have a notebook uh, and pen on the side, and, and uh, if, if there's a particular idea that uh, I remember from the text, I'll just search some keywords and it pops right up, take my notes, and go back to reading. So it's, uh, I find it a lot more convenient than having to leaf through 50 or so pages. It is very important in digital literacy to um, persuade the students that it, the new journalism or online journalism or Communication is not only about learning the tools and mastering the tools, but knowing how to separate the wheat from the chaff and not um, forgetting the two or three cardinal virtues from traditional journalism that should be kept and maintained in, this, in the new landscape, uh, like um, having your own sources of information and uh, double checking and grabbing the phone and things, which in the midst of this um, uh, chaos sometimes of swiftness and uh, immediacy uh, is, is lost. When we talk about digital literacy for communication students, we're not talking about the future, we're talking about the present, the uh, ongoing revolution we are living now. And uh, this revolution gives us more tools and makes our life much easier, but journalism hasn't changed. The aims of my workshop <clears throat> are really about shaking up um, the notion of what an architect is supposed to be. Spanish visual artist Daniel Canogar, known for his work with photography, video, sculpture and installation, recently spent two weeks working with second year students at IE School of Architecture. We learn uh, about ourselves. I mean that we have discovered new things of what we are and what we want. I see architects uh, reinventing themselves. Uh, and thinking about other ways of, of, of working that is not only about constructing. We have to, to think more and being more creative, creative in less time. 
I think that architects and artists have a lot in common. We both like to build things. However, I think that maybe as visual artists, um, we have a little more freedom uh, than architects do, unfortunately, because there are many constraints associated with actually building. And so I'm very interested in um, giving architects, young architects, uh, tools to be able to come up with audacious, less logical ways of thinking and working with more risky approaches to thinking about architecture. It's a way to express yourself because yeah. you have a lot of ideas in your mind, but as an architect you can express all that ideas into a building or a housing block or whatever, because you can do those things to, to the rest of the people to share your opinion and your ideas. That is something that I think the artists uh, were kind of doing all the time because we generally tend to have uh, less constraints than, than usually than architects do when it comes to, to actually uh, building and, and, and preparing an exhibition. So this is something that I think I like to share with architects. The artists at the end don't have to deal with constraints and the architect has to, but at the beginning they are the same because I think that every one of us, not, we are not architects but we are future architects, have these little artists. I think that uh, there already are links between architects and uh, architectural students and artists. This is something that is very pervasive already in, in the world we live in. Uh, there's a tremendous cross-fertilization in the fields of architecture and art and uh, more and more uh, artists are working with architects and architects are collaborating with artists. So I think, I think it's only this experimentation workshop is only a reflection of something that already is beginning to exist and be of great importance in the professional world. Entrepreneur. Noun. A person who sets up a business or businesses. For me, an entrepreneur is a person who has a passion to create value that didn't exist before. My name is Iso Kent. I'm from the Netherlands and I'm currently studying at IE University a degree in business. I started my first company when I was 15. My current company is named Twallers, where I work with charities. And now at IE University, I'm starting my next one. And I'm 19 years old. Is there an age for entrepreneurship? When I started my first company, I was 15. I had a big idea. I wanted to start uh, an e-commerce website and I decided to divide it up in tiny steps and gain the confidence for each next step. Uh, of course, my age was a challenge across different moments. I once came into a boardroom and it was sitting there with the CEO and, uh, and CTO of this company and I saw an incredible skeptical face about me coming there to consult them on, on a project. And that is natural. I mean, if you have a 16-year-old kid walking in and you're a CEO of, of 40 plus, you will initially be skeptical. The reason I got there, though, was because of reputation. By doing good things in the past, building that up, and having people willing to vouch for you and say, okay, listen to this guy. Give him 10, 20 minutes of your time and then decide. And I think that's one of the most important things in business, and especially when you're young, is treat people right, do things right, and, and grow from that forward. Gladly in that meeting, uh, about 15 minutes in, I, uh, the CTO stood up and said, I'm very sorry, I, uh, I apologize. I, I sat here initially saying, thinking that I was wasting my time and gladly realized uh, that's not true. So I think if you're sincere and you're honest and you prove what you're worth, people can see past your age. Why study? Well, initially uh, going to university for me was something that was part of my culture. It was part of my background. I wanted to be 30 and half a degree. Uh, then I visited IE and I saw the campus and I realized that this, there was a degree which was focused on entrepreneurship, which had as its elements not just accounting, but, but other factors that interest me. And since I've been here, I think the main reason looking back on, not the reason I did a degree, but the reason someone should do a degree, is to broaden your mind. I mean, to be in an environment where you have multiple people around you who, who think in different ways, from different nationalities, to have courses which make you think outside of your box. And I think that's why I'm very happy that I'm doing a degree. So, an age for entrepreneurship? Well, I don't think there's an age for entrepreneurship. I think entrepreneurship is something timeless. I think it's a drive for wanting to create value, create value out of nothing, and do that by, by getting great people around you. So if you're, if you're 10 years old with a lemonade stand 
and you're trying, to, you're trying to sell lemonade or if you're 50 years old and trying to start a biotech company, I don't think there is a difference. Because the only reason you can be crazy enough to be an entrepreneur is to have that passion and drive to achieve your goals. And I think that's what entrepreneurship is about and that's why I don't think there's an age for it. Join us again next time for another edition of Edutainment.